Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the revised journal test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 263. Yesterday, on, on day 180, today is our lesson number 185. Yesterday, on day number 80, 184, we did the data analysis problem number 3 on page number 296. And I'm, I was supposed to continue on page 296, but the next problem that they give you, problem number 4, data analysis question number 4 on page number 296, is very similar to the problem that I'm about to do, which you will find on page number 263 at the very bottom of it. And since they're very similar, I thought we should do this one first before we tackle the one that they give you in the exercises. So let's do this together. Turn to page number 263 at the very bottom of it. They give, you, they give us 25 observations, 25 data points. They went around in this particular town and they surveyed 25 families, asking them, asking them how many kids they had in the family and they made a record of it. And these are the observations, 25 of them. 1, 2, 0, 4, 1. 1, 2, 0, 4, 1. 3, 3, 1, 2, 0. 3, 3, 1, 2, 0. 4, 5, 2, 3, 2. 4, 5, 2, 3, 2. 3, 2, 4, 4, 3, 2, 4, 1, 2. And finally, 3, 0, 2, 3, 1. 3, 0, 2, 3, 1. So these are the 25 observations. The reason I wanted to do this question is because we want to learn from scratch as to how to build these charts there. The, the two charts that you see there, the two tables that you see there on page number 264, we're going to build those tables from scratch. Okay, so here we go. So we have number of kids, number of kids, and here is the frequency. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So let's get going. Okay? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. How many zeros do we have here? Let's count them. We have 1, 0, 2, 0, 3 zeros. I see 3 zeros there. How many ones do we have? Let's count the ones. We have 1, 2, 3, you gotta go systematically. Three, go by row by row. Four, I see five of them. That's it. Shouldn't take forever. Just go row by row. Don't go all over the place. Make a habit. I like to go by row by row. Some people like to go by columns. But you see how I set them up? I did not write them in a straight line, 25 observation, because that gets to be annoying as hell. To me, it's a matter of preference. I like to write them like this. Since there are 25 of them, I figured five in each row would be nice. Uh, now we have two, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I missed that six and seven. Oh, how did that happen? We have seven twos, and then we have threes. One, two, three, four, five, and six. How many fours do we have? I see one, two. Three fours. And how many fives do we have? We have only one five, and only one five, the only one. So that's it. That's that's called a frequency table. That's called a frequency table where the frequencies are given an absolute number. These are not relative frequency. Relative frequency table is where you state the the occurrence of a given observation either in fraction or as a percentage. And then we are going to do both. So that's what we're going to do here now. We're going to build a relative frequency table. Relative frequency table. Same thing. Number of kids. And here, instead of a set of frequency in absolute figure, we're going to have relative frequency. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and finally 5. Relative frequency is very simple to figure out. 
first thing we have to figure out is how many total observations do we have here, which is 25. We're given here 25 observations. And when we add this figure up, it better add up to 25. And I'm going to do that very quickly just to make sure that we haven't made any boo-boo, just as a double check. So we have 7 plus 3 is 10. 10, and I see 6, 3, and 1. That's another 10. So that's 10 plus 10 is 20, and then another 5. So it is 25. How many zeros do we have? How many families have, have no kids? Three families. Three out of 25. Three out of 25. Three out of 25. How many, how many, how many families have just one child? They have five families. Five out of 25. And similarly, two is seven families. Uh, seven out of 25. And then we have three. Three, three kids. Six families have three kids. And three families have four kids. There are three families in the town that have four kids. So that's four out of 25. And finally, there's only one family in the town with five, five children. That's it. And that is, a, that is a perfectly legitimate relative frequency table. There is nothing wrong with it. There is nothing wrong with it. Except in the book, they show that as a percentage, which is also fine. It's a matter of preference. It's a matter of what is required in a given situation. So let's do that in percentage, shall we? which is very easy, very simple to do. I'm going to erase this part here so that I can explain to you here. It's a very simple process. What you do is, you take, see, which is why, which is why I wrote down 3 over 25 like this to begin with, because I knew what we needed to do at the end, but then I changed my mind and I put it down a little bit in a defensive way, in a grown-up way, so that uh, you can see how to make a transition from there to there. So 325, 325, if you want to write that as a percentage, what does percentage mean? The word percentage means the very word, the very word percent actually means per 100. That's what percent means, per 100, out of 100. So somehow we have to make this top number out of 100. How can we make the bottom 100? Well, that's, that's very simple. Multiply the top and the bottom by 4. As long as you multiply the top and the bottom by the same number, you're not changing the fraction. So, turns out that 3 out of 25 is same as 12 out of 100. Voila, that goes here. 12 percent. 5 out of 25 is very simple. You have 5 out of 25, multiply the top and bottom by 4, which is same as 20 out of 100. Which, of course, we knew because, you know, 5 out of 25 is same as 1 fifth. And, of course, I hope you know that 1 fifth is 20 percent. 7 out of 25, some people might say, well, that's very difficult to figure out what, what that is in terms of percentage, but they are wrong. It is not difficult. 7 out of 25 is same as, again, same trick. Somehow make the bottom into 4. Somehow we have to make the bottom into 100. In this case, it's very simple. Multiply the bottom by 4. And since we're multiplying the bottom by 4, we have to top, multiply the top by 4. So it's 28 out of 100, or 28%. 6 out of 25, 6 out of 25 is going to be, multiply the top and bottom by 4 again, is 24 out of, 24 percent. If you multiply the top and bottom by 4, 4 times 4 is 16, so you get 16 percent. Turns out 4 out of 25 is same as 16 out of 100. And 1 out of 25 is same as 4 percent. 1 out of 25 is same as 4 out of 100. That's it. That's what it is. So that's how we build the thing. There are two more things I want to do with this. I want to do with this problem here, even though the book does not talk about it. The book, the book does not ask you. I want to find out the mean. What was the what is the average number of children for this particular family? For these particular families that were surveyed, the 25 families. I want to know the mean, and I want to know the median. And I want to know the mode. I want to know everything. Okay, we're going to figure out everything. The mean, the median, and the mode. Let's start with mean. Let's start with mean. Mean is very straightforward. We just have to take the weighted average. We have three families with zero, zero children. So we have three families with zero children. Then we have five families with one child. 
Then we have seven families with two children. Then we have six families with three children. Then we have four families with four children. Is that true? Four families with four children? That is not 16%. I made a mistake. That is, I knew there was no three, there was no, there was no, I, I remember it. It's not, it, this should be, this is supposed to be, how many families have four children? Three families. You know, it is strange. I should have just gone with my gut feeling here. I'm going to pause here for a second. I'm going to tell you what my thought process is. Just about 10 seconds ago, just about 10 seconds ago, I said to myself, as soon as we finish these percentages, I wanted to add them up and see if we actually get 100%. That is a check on your work. And I said to myself, well, let's not beat the dead horse. Of course, it's going to be 100%. How can we possibly go wrong? It's so simple. But we did go wrong. This is not right. It is not 16. So it does not take that long to actually add them up. And I should have done that. Let's do that. See, 12 plus 20 is 32. 32 plus 28. 32 plus 28. Well, 28 plus 2 is 30. 30 plus 30 is 60. So 60 so far. 60 plus 20 is 80. 84. 84 and 4 is 88, 88 and 16, 88 and 16 would be more than 100%. Now we would not have known at that point where the mistake lied, but at least we would have known that something, is, uh, something has gone awry, something has gone wrong. The mistake was here, this is not 16. There are, there are three families with four children, three families with four children, this is the 12%. And of course, if it's 12%, then of course it will add up to 100%. It has to add up to 100%, obviously. So we have three families with four children. That's how you catch your mistake. That's, that's, those are the checks, uh, checks you have to do. A little while ago, I did actually do a check something. Uh, I don't remember what it was, but I did some. Oh, we, we added up to see if uh, when we did the frequency, I quickly added up to make sure that we get 25 families, and we did. Those are small things that you have to do. It only takes a few seconds, but it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a premium worth paying to buy the insurance. That is a good insurance to buy. It's a good use of your time. Just a few seconds for the peace of mind that you're not on the wrong track. And then we have only one family with five children. That's it. All we have to do is now figure out what those are and add them up and divide by the number of families, 25 families. 3 times 0 is 0, 5 times 1 is 5, 7 times 2 is 14, 6 times 3 is 18, I should have done it right here, 14, 6 times 3 is 18, 3 times 4 is 12, 5 times 1 is 5. Let's see what we can do here, let's see if you can stay with me. 5 plus 5 is 10, this is another 10, so that's 20, 24, 4, carry 2. 3, 4, 5. So we get 54. There are a total of 54 kids in 25 families. 54 kids in 25 families, therefore the average number of, therefore the mean is 54 divided by 25, which is same as 50 plus 4 divided by 25 which means that number of kids in this in this in this survey happens to be two and four twenty fifth. Two and four twenty fifth. Now had it been twenty four, I'm gonna continue here for a second. Had this been I'm not gonna raise anything. Had this been twenty four, we have twenty five family, but had it been twenty four, that would have been four out of twenty four, and of course twenty four can be divided into four. So this is approximately, you can say that it's approximately two and one sixth child. Two and, not child actually, it's two actually, two and one sixth children per family. That's the average, approximately. Let's find out the mode and the median. Well, the mode is very simple. The mode is most frequently appearing number. The most frequently appearing number is the number of families, uh, the greatest number of families with a given, given number of children, which is right here. Looks like we have seven families with two children. That's your mode. See, we have six families here. We have three families, one family, five family, three family. 
the most most common number, the most uh, frequently appearing number is two. That's the mode. What about the median? Let's find out the median, shall we? Median is the is the middle number. Median is the middle number. How can we figure out median from here? That's what we want to learn. I need the room, so I'm going to raise this thickness. Do it up here. Yeah. Okay. Median is the number that falls right in the middle, and lucky for us, we have odd number of numbers. We have 25 observations. Since we have 25 observations, we're going to put 12 observations to the right. We're going to have 12 observations to the right. Then we're going to have our median, the middle one. We're going to have 12 observations lower than that, and we're going to have 12 observations above it. 12 observations below it, 12 observations above it, that's 24. The 13th observation is our median. The median is the 13th observation. We just have to figure out where the 13th observation falls. That's what it is. It's very simple. 13th observation. Let's do it together, shall we? Well, let's see. This is three, three families, three, five families. That's eight so far. Eight plus seven is 15. What do you know? We up, up to here is 15 families. Again, one more time. 3 families plus 5 families is 8 families plus 7 families is 15 family. So up to here we have 15th family, therefore the mode is also 2. Mode turns out is same as, oh sorry, rather I meant to say median. Median turns out is same as mode, which is 2. And of course the average was also very close to 2. We just found out that it was 2 and 4 25th or approximately 2 and 1 6th. That's it. That's all there is. Now I feel that we are ready to do the problem that is given to us on page number 296, problem number 4. We are going to do it tomorrow. Why don't you do it on your own before watching the clip. Problem number 4, do it on your own, follow the same procedure and then tomorrow you and I will do it together. Again, problem number 4 on page number 296 for tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.